begin. Last time we had the Van de Graaff generator again, and we talked about we talked about lighting up a lamp. Remember, I had this lamp, and I held it like this, and the lamp lit, and I held it like this, and it didn't light. Surrounding that dome is an alteration of space, and that space is said to contain an electric field a force field. And you can tell, because when you walk by this, you can feel your hair stand up a little bit and end. Space is different with all that charge there. And it turns out the force field is stronger in here and weaker and weaker as you go further and further away. In fact, it behaves as an inverse square law when you have all your charge localized at one place like this. It keeps petering out with the inverse square of distance, just like gravity does. And when I held the lamp like this, it lit. You know why? That's because this part here was in a stronger part of the force field than here. We say that there's more energy on the charges here than here, which introduces a concept I want to see if you can get into. The idea of energy per charge, and we call that voltage. Let me define that. Energy per charge. That'd be energy in joules compared to charge in, do you know what the unit of charge is? Coulomb. coulomb. So one joule per one coulomb is said to be a, an electrical pressure of one volt. So that's what voltage is, energy per charge. We saw the dome was charged up to thousands of volts. We saw Trisha touch that thing, thousands of volts. Why wasn't Trisha zapped? Well, she's zapped a little bit, but why is she still here today? Enormous amount of energy per charge, okay? But not very many charges. If Tricia went home tonight and took a bobby pin and stuck it into 110 <laughs> volts at home, honey, Tricia wouldn't be here next time maybe, yeah? Okay, she'd be, she'd be hurt. You know why? That's not so much energy per charge. But how many charges are going to flow when you stick into the power company sockets? A lot or a little? Begins with an L. A lot. So there might be a little energy per charge, but so many, the total energy going from, from through you is very uncomfortable. But the energy that came from the Van de Graaff generator, a lot of energy per charge, but if not many, many charges, then not much total energy. It's very similar to high temperature and low temperature. Remember we talked about the 4th of July sparkler that's got temperature thousand, more than 1,000 degrees? But you don't get burned by the spark, because why? Although the energy per molecule is very high, you don't have very many molecules in the spark. So the total energy is below the threshold of healing. So very, very similar. This idea of something per something else gives sometimes counterintuitive type things. That you could touch a Van de Graaff generator of enormous voltage without harm. That you can have a spark touch you of enormous temperature without harm. It's because it's the energy per something else. Do you kind of see that? Now, what happened over here, why the current flowed had to do with the idea more electrical pressure on one side than the other. And so the flow of current is proportional to voltage difference. Not how much voltage, but how much voltage in one place compared to the other. Think of voltage as a pressure. Huh? So it's proportional to voltage difference. Proportional to. So the more voltage difference, the more. Hey, imagine I have a pipe right here filled with water. Okay, see that water filled pipe? I have a piston over here and I have a piston here. And I push with a certain pressure, maybe five units. I push with the same pressure here, five units. Which way does the water flow? How many states of water ain't gonna flow at all? I say, yeah, but I got under pressure. And you say, yeah, but there's no pressure difference. difference. How about I push here with five? And I push over here with three. What does the water do, gang? What does the water do? The water flows, okay? And similarly, if you take a piece of wire and you put a pressure difference across the wire, and I can do that here. Here's a lamp, okay? This is a 12 volt battery. One end is 12 volts higher than the other. If I touch here and touch here, no light. If I touch here and touch here, no light. 
There's 12 volts, 12 volts, why no light? Check your neighbor, why no light? Let's try the other side. No light, there's still no light. Why, how, how come? But I got, I got zero volts over here. Oh, over here I got 12 volts. There's no difference, you gotta have a difference. Look at how I go like this. A, 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 ought to be, huh? What's the voltage difference across the lamp now? 12. 12. 12. So if you've got a voltage difference, you get a current. It kind of makes sense. This is not counterintuitive. The more voltage difference you have, the more current you're going to have through a conductor. And this is a conductor. It's a piece of wire made out of copper with electrons can flow all through there, gang. So I have a conducting path with a voltage difference. No voltage difference, no current at all. Voltage difference for a current. Make sense? You know, when I was a little kid, I learned about some of the stuff, at least from a neighbor. Across the street was a guy that used to fix his car all the time. He was sort of a little older than us, and he kind of taught us kids a lot of things. And he'd be fixing the car and be under there doing electrical work and everything. And I noticed that what he'd do is he'd put his hand behind his back when he's kind of fooling around. There's a coil in there, high voltage, thousand, more than 1,000 volts, a coil, induction coil, okay? And what he'd do, he'd fooling around with that. He'd make sure one hand behind here. Hey, hey, Jack, how come you put your hand behind there, man? Is I put my hand behind here because I don't want to touch a high voltage and have my other hand over here on the car. Because then the voltage will be between this hand and this hand and gets what's in between, begin with H. Heart. Heart. End with art. Heart. Heart. Try it. Heart. Your heart. heart. And how many, how, how many say, oh, I like to have current flowing through my heart. Who? Oh. <laughs> Come on, no way. You don't want the current to go through your heart. That's the worst thing. And so as long as he touches like this, then the current might go from here right down the foot. Oh, he'd be hurt but it don't go through here. Okay? You don't want it going across your heart. Another thing he always did too, he told us about this. When you touch a wire, a lot of times people touch a wire and <coughs> they, get, uh, uh, they can't let go. You know why they can't let go? People, oh, they attracted to the electric. No, he ain't attracted. Contraction. Remember the biology experiment you used to do with the frog's legs? The frog leg like that, and you come over to and you touch it. The frog is dead, honey. And it's still going like that. It turns out it's an electrical. Can you guys do that? Try it. I hope you can. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what you guys are doing? You are sending electrical impulses down your hand. It's electrical impulses to do that. And it contracts. So what happened when you touch the, 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 the wire? <laughs> it's not that you attract, it's that your fingers contract. So he told us that electrician types, always if they're fooling around, they touch like this. If you touch like and try to get pulled away, see? You're okay. But you don't want to go like that. See what I'm saying? Practical stuff. Practical stuff. Anyway, you want to avoid voltage differences. Hey, why is it that you see birds on high tension wires, bare wires, and you see the bird come down and he grab on the foot and stand on one foot and he's on the wire? And the bird doesn't get fried. The bird's okay. Now what happened? The bird reached down and put the other foot on the same wire. What happened to the bird then? Begin with N and with a thing. Try it. Nothing. He's a bird's okay. Look at hey man, a bird's a hundred thousand volts. Is the bird all right? The bird is all right because you get a hundred. What's the voltage difference across the bird? Zilch, zilch. Let me tell you what I used to do when I was a kid. I grew up in the suburbs of Boston, and we used to go in and visit Boston, and sometimes we'd go to the MTA, Metropolitan Transit Authority. It's the underground train, electrified. The train rides in two, two, two rails, and there's a third rail. And guess what the third rail's for, gang? It's 5,000 volts. That's the source of energy. And that third rail's a little higher, and what the train does, has a little brush all the time scraping. And so it gets 5,000 volts between that brush and the rail, see? 5,000 volts runs your motor, and these things are motor-driven, <coughs> electrified rails. Well, we kids, we used to do something that, looking back, I'm not so proud of it, but let me tell you what we used to do. <laughs> we used to get on a the rail there, we'd get up and there, okay, we'd be in a platform, and the trains are coming by here. And what we would do, and we found out that we could get the people on the platforms very excited, we'd jump down in a pit. And we'd jump down, and, you're not supposed to do that. Because <laughs> they got a white line here. But we would do it anyway. And we found when we did it, the adults up there would freak out. <laughs> now you would think that if they're freaking out and concerned, we would say, wait a minute, we're upsetting the adults. Let's get back up. But we didn't. The more they got upset, some people think that little kids are, are innocent, innocent, innocent. And as you get older and older, you get more and more corrupted. There's a case to be made it's the other way around, okay? That as you get older and older, hopefully you get developed and start to think about other people. But when you're a little kid, you don't kind of do that. But anyway, we used to do that, and we used to play a game and see when the train would come, we'd, we'd jump up and, and let the train go right by. See? And we were good at it. Besides, you could smell the ozone as the train's coming up. 
And we always thought that we could smell better than the other people. We could hear better. Well, it turns out we could. And we were to play a game, see who's the last one to whoop, jump up and let that train come by. Well, the game cascaded. It went further than that. Because we'd be walking on the rail like that, putting our arms out. Now I know why I put the arms out. You guys know why we put the arms out? Increases your rotational inertia, yeah? Okay. We'd be on the rail like that, okay? And then jump to the other rail, boom, like that. And a lady at the top, she said, oh, children! Now, she was identifying with us. We weren't identifying with her. Now, who's more developed? <laughs> children, children, watch out for that third rail. What are you talking about, lady? This one over here? Yes, yes, watch out for that third rail, children. This one, lady, whoomp. What's the voltage? It turns 5,000 volts on this foot. What's the voltage on this foot? 5,000 volts. What's the voltage difference across my body? Zip. What's the current flowing through my body? Zip. Who's OK? I'm all right. She's freaking. She don't know anything. All right? One day, Harry's on that third rail. He's going across the third rail. Oh, Harry, man, he was a son. Oh, Harry, Harry. And she said, lady, don't, don't touch both rails at one time. Uh -oh. He says, what, like this lady? <laughs> at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> no, Harry really didn't do that. But if he did do that, what happened? 5,000, zero, boom, bam, honey. Bad, bad scene. Yeah. You don't want to get a voltage difference. But with no voltage difference, you can do wonders. Yeah. No voltage difference. You could be, you could fall out of a helicopter and come down, boom, hit a high tension wire, and you could hold on it. Maybe it's 120,000 volts. Boom, 120,000. What's over here? 120. Yeah. Oh, man, miracle of miracles, I made it. Well, now I got to get down. Oh, I think I'll just go over here and grab the tower. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, don't grab the tower. What can I have you grab the tower? Oh, no good. Okay. Yeah, then you have a voltage difference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, something happened in California some time ago. Oh, this is over 10 years now. You guys be knowing what a cherry picker is? It's a truck that's got a boom that goes way up and can service the wires. Well, it turns out up near Lake Tahoe, they had a storm, and uh, some of the wires went out. They sent the cherry picker up, and the cherry picker went up there and was repairing the wires and everything, and all of a sudden it slipped in the mud <laughs> and shorted right against the wires. And the whole thing is more than 100,000 volts. The whole thing, and there's a guy up there. And the guy is sitting in there. Guess what his potential is? What his voltage is? Something like the 100 and maybe 120,000. He's the same high voltage. But he's OK, because every part of his body. All right? Now, it turns out that you're not supposed to drink on the job. But he had been drinking beer. You people be knowing what happens after you drink some beer? What you got to do? He had to go to the bathroom, but there's no bathroom up there. <laughs> now he's certainly he's a he's a well well he's not going to go right in his right in his own feet right, so where did he go to the bathroom so to speak, where did he relieve himself, gang? Under the ground. Over the edge. Right over the edge. Guess what his last act was. <laughs> and do you see why? Do you see this is a true story. This is a true story. That guy might as well have tied a piece of copper wire onto himself and throw the other end right down into the ground because he afforded a conducting path from him. Boom. He never knew what hit him. Never knew. He made contact with the ground. So he's got 100,000 volts of grid. That's it. That's it. So when you're up there high and away there, honey, just uh, hold on, OK? <laughs> save it. <laughs> this course may, may save your life someday, yeah? What happened, happened if he had done it one drop at a time? He, he, he would be OK, Campbell, had he done one drop at a time. But he, <laughs> he, or a little, little